It is the final game day of the Basketball Champions League regular season and it all comes down to this for many teams still trying to force their way into the playoff positions. Group D is our focus here this evening with Telecom Baskets Bonn hosting Sedigis Avellino. And it is still very interesting indeed here with uh, a few different scenarios still possible. Decent crowd is coming as well to watch this one. Unfortunately for the home supporters, Telecom Baskets Bond not really playing for much today. They cannot finish higher than seventh. And here are the games for the final game day. Nanterre taking on Besiktas. Ches Nimbuk against Delma Gilona Gora. That's an important one for Sadiga Savalino and uh, Aris against Ustend. I will do my best to try and keep you up to date with all of the scores in those games as the evening progresses. As I said, unfortunately for the German side, they can't finish higher than seventh in the group, so they cannot qualify for either the playoffs in the Basketball Champions League or indeed the last 16 of the FIBA Europe Cup. But uh, good to see that it hasn't dampened the spirits of some of the supporters that have come in to watch this final game day. It's been uh, a pretty rough ride for Telecom Baskets Bonn over the last few months. And here is how Group D stands at the moment. So Besiktas there out in top. So Besiktas will finish first regardless of the results today. But as for Sedigas Avellino here, they will... Well, they currently sit in fifth position. They will stay in fifth position if they either lose here against Telecom Baskets Bonn or if Stelmet Gialona Gora beats Ches Nimburg. However, they can finish fourth and move into that final playoff spot if they win against Telecom Baskets Bonn. But not only that, they also need Gialona Gora to lose against Nimburg. So it is uh, technically out of their hands, unfortunately to uh, actually qualify to the next phase of the Basketball Champions League. They need the result to go their way in the Nimburg Gielona Gora game as well. So uh, that is where all eyes will be as well on that one for Sadiga Savalino. Otherwise, it will be a trip to the FIBA Europe Cup. They'll uh, enter that in the last 16. Now, this is exactly what we wanted from the Basketball Champions League. It's all coming down to the final game day of the regular season. 14 hard weeks of toil and effort for all of these sides. But really, second, third and fourth spots still up for grabs here in Group D. As I mentioned, it's only Besiktas who know that they will finish first no matter what. And then uh, Ches Nimbuk, they will finish second if they beat Stelmet Gielona Gora. And Ter will finish second if uh, they beat Besiktas, while Nimbuk lose to Gielona Gora. There's all different kinds of scenarios that can come out of this evening. So I'll do my best as the uh, evening goes on to try and sort out who's going to finish where. Of course it is of great importance really to try and finish as high up the group as you possibly can the teams that finish in first and second position will be seeded for the playoffs playoffs will be played over uh, two rounds march the sixth and seventh and then the second legs on the 13th and 14th of, uh, of March and also the teams that finish first and second will play the second leg of their playoff match at home so they know that they've got home court advantage for the second leg so yeah even uh, teams that have qualified today like uh, Nanterre for example they certainly won't be taking their foot off the gas just yet they'll want to finish as high up this group as they possibly can as we just watch the Telecom Baskets Bond side be introduced to the fans here. It's such an exciting day yesterday, trying to determine uh, 
who finished where in Group C. It went right down to just a couple of seconds to go in the I-Captains game. And it wouldn't surprise you at all whether Group D was exactly the same here as well today. Hasn't happened for Telecom Baskets Bonn in the Basketball Champions League this year. They uh, are four and nine, have struggled really. Rodriguez Avellino having a good run domestically as well. They uh, got back to the top of the Italian league with the 77-59 triumph in Turin. And that was a game that saw them shooting 13 of 29 from the perimeter. And they also held their host to 22 from 68 from the field. But yeah, it is a frustrating position for Rodriguez Avellino to be in here today because they know that even a win for them may not be enough unless Ches Nimbuk do help them out with that win over Stelmet Gialona Gora. So the two sides will just uh, finish their warm-ups. We we're just a few minutes until tip-off. Here are our referees today from Poland, Bosnia and Sweden respectively. And what a great job they've all done as well during the regular season. Avellino come into this game off the back of uh, a convincing 13-point win over Aris last week. Here's their starting five, Philoi Rich, Nicole, Lunen and Ndai. Jason Rich averaging 15.5 points a game in the Basketball Champions League and uh, Stefano Sacripanti is their head coach as well. Philoi is another to keep a lookout for. Averaging 11.8 points a game. And Lunen will be looking to go to work on the boards. He's averaging 6.9 rebounds a game. Here is the Telecom Baskets Bond starting five. They go with Mayo, DeLeo, Zubcic, Polis, Bartolo and Brunig. Well, Josh Mayo has uh, really been their standout man on offense. He's averaging 14.3 points a game and 3.4 assists as well. And Tomislav Zubcic has uh, a good outside shot as well for a big man. Averaging 10.3 points a game and four rebounds. And Pedro Krunic is the man in charge of the German side. Such a strong domestic league as well, of course in Germany for Telekom Baskets Bonn to compete in, the likes of Bayern Munich and Alba Berlin and Riesen, Ludwigsburg, many Beirut. A lot of uh, Basketball Champions League sides there. Currently Telekom Baskets Bonn sitting fifth in the Basketball Bundesliga, they're 13 and seven so far. Bayern Munich just running away with it, 18 and one after their 19 games played. Quite an extraordinary record from Bayern Munich. Well, I suppose the good news for Telecom Baskets Bonn is that after today they will just be able to focus on their domestic campaign rather than having to play in the Basketball Champions League every week. It is obviously a great distraction to have but I suppose it will allow them to just focus on one competition rather than focusing on a few. Sadigas Avellino would just be hoping that Telecom Baskets Bond, the fact that they can't finish any higher than seventh, perhaps they're not going to be fully focused. 
today, and uh, Sadiga Savalino may well be able to take advantage of that. Obviously, Sadiga Savalino with it all to play for here. All they can do is do their job. They have to win here and hope that results go their way elsewhere, which is perfectly feasible as well because still much Gielona Gora against Nimburg. Well, Nimburg could will probably be favourites to win that game, so there may well be a little change between fourth and fifth spot. Extra pass out to the corner, the first uh, three on the way, can't get it to go, and Ndai just taps it down. Here's Lunen. That's Filoy. Filoy with the shot clock down to four, good penetration, little pass to Ndai who just about gets it away before the buzzer and the first points go the way of Hamadi and Dai. There's Anthony DeLeo. Decides to shoot the three, and this one goes down. So a couple of shots already from the outside for the German team. Connected with one from two. Here is Jason Rich, he's the man that they want to try and get going, as well as this man, Aaron Filoy, he just comes up short with the point shot for a big man, to Zubcic. Yeah, completely uncontested three, another one though that comes up short. Can't quite get one to go at the moment from the outside, Sadiga Savalino, little pass behind the back, another three on the way, and another three knocked down. Back to back threes already. So Tomislav Zubcic is two from two already from the outside. Nice little penetration again, another shot miss. Sadiga Savalino just struggling with their shot at the moment in the early stages. Managed to grab the offensive rebound. Rich just shoots the three again, another one off target. Nearly managed to grab the offensive board. Now, Josh Mayo to Zubcic, looking for his third. Can't get it to go. Another chance for Mayo, comes up short. Another offensive rebound, though. They need to box out a little better than this, Sadiga Savalino. Nice pass and an easy two. Martin Brunig. Well, it's a nice start for the German side. They lead by... Eight points to two. Well, the defense went AWOL, and a goaltender's been called, so the bucket will count. Nice penetration by Josh Mayo, it's just way too easy from a Sadiga Savalino point of view. He's Luinen now into Jason Rich. Well, he had a completely open look at the three, and finally, Sadiga Savalino knocked one down from the outside, and it's Viloy, the man who does so. Brings the game back to just three. Zubcic, step back two, no good. Rebound by Martin Lunen. Wonder how often today Stefano Sacrapanti will check his phone. That's a great pass. Defense splitting pass and the simplest of layups for Lunen. Yeah, just wonder how often Sacrapanti or one of his coaching staff will just check his phone and just see what's going on in the Ches Nimburg game. As Mayo tried to just pop it off to Bruinig and draws the foul. <laughs> foul goes on Hamidi and Dai. So they'll get a 14 second reset here, will the Germans. Is Mayo. This will be a long two if it goes, which it does. And Josh Mayo is off to a nice start. He's up to six. 
Shooting three from four. Ariel Phil, he throws it back outside. Good ball movement this by Sadiga Tavolino. Had a look at the three from the corner, decided against it. Can't use the glass to bank it in. Bartolo grabs the rebound and Zubcic throws it away. So the turnover. And now the foul. So foul goes on Mayo. His first. And a couple of changes here for Bonn. Konstantin Klein and uh, Julian Gasinski. The two men to check in. Still with a three point lead. We're nearly halfway through the opening quarter here. Here is Dekol. Now Rich, shot clock is down to three. Someone's got to get it away. Philoy, 4 3 is good. Shot clock counting down. And with about two seconds to go, just throws a three and we're all tied up. Philoy now two from three from beyond the arc. DeLeo throws it out to the corner. Again, the shot clock counting down. Down to two seconds, he's got to get it away. Well, this will be some shot if it goes. And they've managed to grab the offensive board anyway. And Konstantin Klein just tells everyone to calm down a little bit. Brunig came out to set the screen. Klein shown, throws the three, can't get it to go, and die with the rebound. Jason Rich, Lunen, Uyoy again, doesn't have too many options out to his left, played a nice pass and Dai again going to work on the offensive glass, manages to give Sadiga Tavolino a second opportunity, great pass and Dai throws it down. Well it doesn't half help having someone the size of Hamidi and Dai. Two metres 13 is the big centre. Not two metres 13, he's not even the tallest man in the uh, Sadiga Savalino roster. That belongs to Kirilo Fesenko, who stands at two metres 15. There's Ariel Filoy. Foul drawn by Jason Rich goes on. Polas Bartolo. Ron Curry checks in for the German side. And does Wells on the floor for Sadiga Savellino. Another man in double digits. For points per game is Daz Wells, 11.4 points a game. He's averaging. Looking to try and get off the mark here, just comes up short. Oh, really threw it away. Good hands to keep the ball alive. Malcolm Hill throws it out of bounds. Another turnover for the German side. No turnovers so far for Sadiga Savalino. A couple for Telecom Baskets Bond. Thomas Scrub is the man who's come in here for the Italians. Just over two and a half to go in this opening quarter. Here's Ariel Filoy. Filoy, nice pass behind the back. Penetrates into the lane, is fouled. And it'll be the first trip to the line for Jason Rich. And a chance for Sadiga Savalino to take the lead here. Went to college at uh, Florida State, did Jason Rich. And has played all over the place before signing for Sadiga Savalino in July of last year. 
I was playing in France before that for uh, quite a few years. I was uh, an LMB All-Star as well in 2017. Uses the glass, nice touch by Ron Curry. Here goes Jason Rich. Good transitional defense by Telecom Baskets. Bond managed to get bodies back. Now uh, Fitty Paldo throws it out to the other side. Rich for three. No good. Last touch, though, was off Malcolm Hill. He uh, protests his innocence. But Sadiga Zavalino will keep it. Some help, just throws it up from just inside the foul line and gets it to go. Didn't look as though he had too many other options there. Does well, so did well to knock down the jumper. Avellino leading by one, 90 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Drives off balance, but uh, the offensive rebound is good by Muller. Fittipaldo, now Scrub, the left-hander comes up short, rebound by Ron Curry, now Ron Curry trying to get them going, just trying to increase the tempo out here for the Germans. Muller again, throws it back outside, the three on the way from Malcolm Hill, there's nothing but string and Bond have a four-point lead now. Fittipaldo into Daz Wells. The step back two is no good. Malcolm Hill brings down the rebound and now looking for a fast break. The transitional defense by Sadigas Avellino. There's a chance for a two for one if they were quick. As Malcolm Hill has two bodies all over him, throws it back outside, just decides to shoot the three. Had no one around him and in the end the foul goes on Malcolm Hill. Early stages in the other game that affects Sadiga Savalino here is uh, Stelmet Zilonagor with a four point lead against Ches Nimberg. They're a little behind us, they've still got uh, nearly two minutes to go in that opening quarter, so not going the way at the moment that uh, Sadiga Savalino will want in both games. In fact, they trail by four here, and Ches Nimberg trailing by four as well in the other game in Group D. Oh, nice pass, unselfishly done. And now they've got about four seconds to try and advance the ball up the other end of the floor. Ron Curry just throws up the three, tries to bank it in. No good. And that brings to an end the first quarter. And it's uh, a first quarter that's a tight one here in Germany. Telecom Baskets Bond 21. Sadiga Savalino 19 at the end of the first. Both sides shooting over 60% from two-point range, but both struggling with their shot from three. Avellino just two from eight. Bon shooting just three from ten from the outside. So that's something that both of these sides will uh, want to improve upon. And let's try and listen in here to Stefano Sacrapanti. Die Basis ist Osterkerz in Großhandel. 
second quarter just about to get underway. It is uh, Telecom Baskets Bonn who lead by two. 21 points to 19. Zubcic has six. All six of those coming from beyond the arc as well. Filoy is leading the way for Sadiga Savalino. He also has six. In a game, of course, that Telecom Baskets Bonn can finish no higher than seventh in Group D as the three is on the way for the perfect start to this second quarter. And they do well, actually, to draw the foul. Foul goes on Curry, on Zarini. And Sadigas Avellino have to win here, and they also have to hope that Ches Nimbert beats Stelmet Giolona Gora. Inside, outside, turn down to three. Now Fiddy Paldo. Shot clock is down to two. Fiddy Paldo's got to get it away. He shoots the three. Comes up short. And uh, the struggles from the outside continue, although they've turned it straight over here. And Sadiga Savalino back in possession. Does Wells out to the corner. Fiti Paldo catches, shoots, and makes. And Bruno Fiti Paldi knocks down the three. And they punish the sloppy turnover from Telecom Baskets Bond. Malcolm Hill. Muller sets the screen, Hill nearly lost his balance, shot the two, gets the roll. with a pretty terrible injury when he was a little younger did Malcolm Hill back in 2012 he had a big blood clot that was found in his in his right arm so he had to take quite a few months off to have an operation and fully recover from that fortunately now he's absolutely okay under pressure trying to shoot over the defense but knocks the three down anyway Makes no difference to Konstantin Klein if you put a man right on him. And Bonn again lead by two. Here is Wells, tricky shot. Would have been better just passing it to his right-hand side. He had a, an open man there. Now Ron Curry is running the floor. Last touch was off Fiddy Paldo. And Bonn will keep it still with 18 seconds left on the shot clock. Curry inbounds to Konstantin Klein. Muller comes out, sets the screen. Klein back into Muller. Goes for the tricky left hand jump hook. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Thomas Scrub. And Fitty Paldo. Fitty Paldo drives. Great penetration by. Bruno Fiddy Paldo and it's off the back of his three point shot. Last possession. He now makes a two and ties this game up. 26 points each. And you just get the feeling again, don't you? Just like yesterday, that it's going to come right down to the final few seconds here as another three is knocked down. But they've got to try and defend that perimeter a little bit better, Sadiga Savalino. It was completely open look for Ron Curry there. And Curry moves to five points personal. And it's got a nice feel to this game. I suppose Telecom Baskets Bonn in one way are just playing with a bit of a, a carefree attitude. They know that uh, this game isn't of vital importance to them. Can just free wheel almost and but sometimes that's when teams can be at their most dangerous when the pressure's off they can just shoot with uh, fluency and rhythm and at the moment they lead by three Long campaign for Telecom Baskets Bond. They actually had to qualify for the Basketball Champions League as well. 
before uh, the regular season even started. They had to get the better of Katia Basket, which they comfortably did. To the baseline, throws it away. Cheap turnover by Zaniga Savalino, and now the fast break, looking to try and go coast to coast, gets it and won. Martin Bruni ran the floor, he had options left and right of him, just decided to go himself, threw it up in traffic, managed to get it to go and draw the foul as well. And a chance for a three-point play for Martin Bruni. Well, Telecom Baskets Bond have struggled really here at home in Germany. Took them quite some time to register their first victory in front of their home fans. In fact, it didn't come until game day nine in the game before the Christmas and New Year break where they beat Stelmet Zielona Gora by 14. But yeah, since then, well, before then, they hadn't won a game here. So I suppose they can look back to that poor start in front of their home support that has really cost them dear as another three is knocked down by Fidi Paldo, who's having a good second quarter here. A couple of threes and a nice layup as well. Here's Malcolm Hill. Bucket won't count. The whistle came beforehand. So it'll be inbounded by Konstantin Klein. Lead is back down to three. Nice little pick and roll, can't get it to go. And Dai grabs the rebound. Now Fitty Paldo, who's the man with the hot hand here for the Italian side at the moment. Fitty Paldo again, throws it back outside. Jason Rich. And a little pass behind his back, throws it straight out of bounds, does Daz Wells. So timeout calls. Sadiga so Savalino doing well here because uh, Telecom Baskets bonded. Extend the lead to six, but they're staying with them. It's back to three, and it is the Italian side with the timeout. So Chesnimberg leading by four against Stelmet Gielona Gore in the uh, other game that matters here. In fact, they lead by seven now, 28 points to 21. So that game is going to plan. This game isn't as he throws it down with two hands. And the lead is back up to five. And Martin Bruinig's had a good first half so far. We've uh, played five minutes in the second quarter. 34 points to 29. Bruinig's up to seven. Here is Jason Rich. Rich is fouled, can't get it to go, but we'll shoot two from the line.
do fear as though feel as though Jason Rich has got to try and get hot here for Sadiga Tavolino. For him to stand a real opportunity tonight, averaging 15.5 points a game in the Basketball Champions League. Only puts him 13th, though, overall in terms of uh, points per game in the whole regular season. Kevin Hunter is the man who leads the way with 20.6 points a game for the struggling Rosa Radom. to Pinar Kashiaka boys, David Kennedy and Gerard Jones. Here's Bruinig. Mayo for three is way too much on it and Dai grabs the rebound. And it does well, still just a one possession game here. Three points, the lead, Avellino with uh, no more fouls to give. One have won. Throws it back outside. Good perimeter defense. Got out to Philoy. What a pass that was. Just saw Daz Wells all on his own. Looked as though Philoy was just going to throw it up. And at the last second, just saw Wells completely open. Great little dish to him. So he's back to a one point game. Here's Josh Mayo. Mayo trying to weave away through, and they've stolen it here, Sadiga Savalino, and now looking to catch them on the fast break as Wells makes the two, and Sadiga Savalino leads. Great running from Daz Wells, and they exploited the steal that they were able to get, and a timeout has been called, and all of a sudden things going a lot better for Sadiga Savalino out here, not only in this game, but incredibly, Ches Nimbuk now lead by 14 against Stelmet Giolona Gora. So that is very much going to plan for the Italian side. It's a Telecom Baskets bond timeout. Go for strong finish. Strong finish. You get the ball. One contact. Go for that. For strong finish. Oh, hello. Four side. So we've got just under four minutes to go in this first half. It's been a uh, pulsating first half as well, in which we've had several lead changes. No team has really been able to break away. The biggest lead has been six for Telecom Baskets Bond. And Sadiqa Savalino haven't led by more than two. They lead by one here. The two sh point shot comes up short. Shot clock is down to one, has to throw it up and does right on the buzzer. Knocks down the three, Anthony DeLeo. Looked as though the chance had gone, but DeLeo just knocked it down. He's up to five. He's Leunen. Steps back, well, they just back off him. Decided not to throw the three. Jason Rich, oh, how about that for? Hand skills rejected. Martin Brune gets a big hand to it. And now the fast break down the other end nearly trips himself up. Paulus Bartolo. <laughs> Not much he could have done about that. Some screaming instructions is uh, Pedro Krunic. Ariel Filoy. Born in Argentina. It's Filoy as the big alley oop is thrown down by and die. Well, when you've got someone at 2 meters 10, you might as well use him. He's up to six points. He 
100% from the field so far is Hamidi and Dai. Now Daz Wells trying to weave a web through. 37 points each. Wells again throws it back outside. The three on the way is off target. Offensive rebound by Ndai. Throws it back to Filoy. He slows things down. Former Umana Rea Venezia man, who they of course suffered heartbreak yesterday. Umana Rea Venezia in the Basketball Champions League. Had to throw it up with the shot clock counting down. Not sure whether that was a pass or a shot. Either way, it didn't quite go to plan. As Mayo responds with a three-point shot of his own, off target. 20 seconds to go in this first half. Here's Martin Lunen. Lunen spinning, trying to throw up the right-hand jump hook, was fouled, and Lunen will head to the line and shoot two. Pretty good uh, free-throw shooter, though, Martin Lunen, shooting at 81% in the regular season so far this uh, this campaign. So no real surprise to see him make both of them. Here's Anthony DeLeo. Leo goes for three. Off target was Zubcic. That's the first outside shot that the big man has missed so far. Filoy nearly went flying. It's not really a fair battle between him and Zubcic. And that brings Bon into the penalty. But a timeout is called here. Just over a minute to go by uh, Telecom Baskets Bon. Sadigas Avellino finished strongly here in the second quarter. They've got uh, free throws upcoming to try and extend the lead to four. It's Ariel Filoy at the line, another uh, very competent free throw shooter as well, shooting at 81.8% in the regular season. Still very much going to plan for Avellino in the other game. Nimburg leading by 14 against Stelmet Zielona Gora. They really up the ante in this second quarter and have just raced away from the Polish side. Managed to grab the offensive rebound after the miss with the second free throw here. The shot clock is down to two. The three-point shot is just a little too much on it. Bruni grabs the rebound. with their biggest lead of the game so far. It's only three. That's how tightly contested this game has been. Shot clock is down to four here. DeLeo just shoots it from miles out. Can't get it to go. Offensive rebound, though, by Bartolo. Bartolo can't get it at the second time of asking either. And uh, they can now have the last possession of this second quarter, if they wish, with 15 seconds or so to go. Jason Rich just slowing things down. Now he turns on the afterburners. Rich spins, nearly loses the ball. In fact, does lose the ball. They've got about a second to throw it up. Has to throw it up and banks it in. Right on the buzzer. 
Paulo Bartolo knew that the shot clock was counting down. He just had to throw it up, whether he intended to bank it in or not, I'm not sure. But either way, he won't care. And what a game we've got here in Germany at half-time. Telecom Baskets Bond 39, Sadigas Avellino 40. Both sides shooting the two pretty well. Bond at 59%, Avellino at 61. Avellino's three-point shot, though, letting them down just 29% so far. Pretty similar in terms of rebounds and assists and steals. Three big blocks, though, for the German side and a few more turnovers. They'll want to try and look after the ball a little bit better in that second half, but six turnovers, certainly not the end of the world for them. Brunig leading the way with seven points. Bartolo with four rebounds, Deleo with two assists, and Fittipaldo leading the way for Sidigas Avellino. He's got eight, and Dai with six big rebounds, and Filoy has had a nice game as well. He's got uh, four assists to go with his seven points. I think they are just going to make sure that... Uh, Bartolo got that shot away in time. This will tell us, I'm pretty sure he did. It was very close. Oh, not sure, you know. Not sure whether the ball had left his hands. Yeah, I think that is going to count just. Now, that really was, we're talking a tenth of a second or so, but I'm pretty sure that'll count, so... I think we still do just have a one-point game. Yeah, it's just uh, given the signal that it does. So, Sadigas Avellino with a marginal lead here in Germany. They lead by one. And the other game that matters to the Italian side is certainly going their way because Nimburg leading by 13 against Stelmet Zielona Gora. Remember, if Sadigas Avellino win, and Ches Nimburg win, then it is Sadigas Avellino that will finish fourth, and Stelmet Zielonagora will drop down to fifth. Make sure you're back in 10 minutes time or so for the start of the second half.
Well, welcome back, everybody, to Germany. It is the final game day of the regular season of the Basketball Champions League, and Group D is where we're at here. And there's still plenty to be decided here. It is only Besiktas who are safe. They are the only side that know that they will finish first, no matter what, but the other positions are still very much up for grabs. And uh, Sadigas Avelino, who we're focusing on here against Telecom Baskets Bonn, they lead by just a single point, 40 points to 39. So they're doing their job only just. And the other thing that uh, the Italian side need to go their way is Ches Nimburg to get the better of Stelmet Giolona Gora. And that is happening at the moment. They lead by 12 at half time, do Ches Nimburg. So providing Sadigas Avelino can hold on here and, well, ideally for them, stretch their lead to something a little more comfortable. Then it will be Sadiga Savalino that will finish in that final playoff spot in fourth position. And uh, Stelmet Zilo Nagora have had such an incredible run over the last few weeks. Remember, they were a side that were two and seven not so many weeks ago. And they've really managed to turn it round in, uh, well, after the Christmas period, really. So it would be some story if they were to make it through to the playoffs. But at the moment, as things stand, it is Stelmet Zilo Nagora who would finish fifth and would go through to the last 16 of the FIBA Europe Cup. But, uh, well, of course, Sadiga Savalino only have that slender one-point lead at the moment. So still plenty can change here and plenty can change in the other game as well. The 12-point lead we've seen vanish on uh, many occasions during the regular season. So don't think that that one's over by any means either. The other games in Group D, Aris uh, are leading Usten by 37 points to 27. And Nanterre getting the better of Besiktas, 42 points to 33. Besiktas may well have taken an early holiday, perhaps, on the Basketball Champions League, knowing that they will finish first no matter what. But a very important second half coming up. Can Sadiga Savalino make things a little more comfortable for them out here? I'm sure they would have seen the Ches Nimburg score during that halftime break. So they know that uh, Nimburg are certainly helping them out. But even though Telecom Baskets Bond can finish no higher than seventh in Group D, there's certainly no signs of them checking out of this competition early. They are still fighting for every ball out here. Perhaps not what Sadiga Savalino wanted. And it will be the German side to get this third quarter underway. Brunig leading the way with seven points. Drives to the baseline. I think Dai just managed to get a little something on the ball, but an offensive rebound, so Telecom Baskets Bomb will keep it. Here is Anthony DeLeo, throws up the alley-oop, he couldn't throw it down with one hand. What a start that would have been to the third quarter. Nice idea. Here is Lunen. Oh, beautiful little spin move from Wells. Extra pass to... Ariel Filloy throws it back outside. Lunin for three, just comes up short. And the rebound by Martin Brunig. Here's Josh Mayo. Shot clock down to three here as DeLeo throws it up, comes up way short. Easy rebound for Daz Wells. And the ball into the hands of Ariel Filloy. Four assists for him so far today. Filloy to go with his seven points. As Jason Rich nearly had his pocket picked. Again, the shot clock down to three. His foot was inside the line. It would have only been a two, but way too much on it anyway. And now Bartolo. Both sides off to a cold start to the second half. Steps back, throws the three again, another one off target. Rebound in the end by Lunen. We've got over two minutes now without a bucket here. It won't be a backcourt violation. The last touch was off uh, a bomb player as Wells turns it over anyway. Or does he? Manages to keep it in. It's all a little scrappy here. Manages to find a green shirt and dies. Throws it back to Lunen. Another three-point shot. Doesn't find its way. And now the fast break for Bond. Throws it out. Mayo in space. Another one. Can't go down. 
but the putback dunk by Martin Brunig, who arrives from nowhere and slams it down with authority. And finally, we have a bucket in this third quarter. Here is Rich, so that's more like it. Just getting him into the low post. Brunig's there, four from six from uh, the field so far today. Avellino again lead by one. The foul here goes on Filoy. Mayo is rejected by and Dai. Dai's had some nice minutes so far today. 6.7 rebounds and a couple of blocks as well. Four and Dai shooting uh, three from three from the field as well. Stilloy. Daz Wells. He's got Bartolo for company. He has to throw up the little teardrop. No good, but Daz Wells steals it straight back. Great hustle from him. Ball straight back in the hands of the Italians. Filoy throws it out. Wells now for three to try and make his steal even better. Can't get it to go. Another offensive rebound, though. Throws it back outside. Filoy now for three. Oh, they're really struggling with their shot here. Especially from the outside, the Italians. It's 21% from three-point range at the moment for Sidigas Avellino. Here is Muller, goes for the left-hand jump hook and Dai grabs the rebound. Rebound number eight for Hamadi and Dai. Filoy throws it out, now Leunen. Rich, Filoy just throws up the mid-range too well. This is just really had uh, half of this third quarter and it's two points each at the moment. Nice bounce pass and fouled and won. Great penetration from the corner from Josh Mayo who knocks down the reverse layup and a chance for a three-point play here for the German side. It's about time we had something happen in this third quarter. It's all been really scrappy so far. Perhaps Aniga Savalino just showing a few signs of nerves. They know just how important this second half is to them. Andrea Zarini has uh, checked into the game for the Italians as Mayo lines up this free throw, which he makes, and Bond lead by two. Finally, a bit of quality in this second half. More than five from the perimeter, though, so far today is Josh Mayo. Leo is called on the foul, that's his third. Fittipaldi, Rich trying to step back to shoot the three, but great defense, has to now shoot over him, can't get it to go. Rebound by Malcolm Hill, and now the fast break potentially on. I thought Zubchic was just going to slow down and throw up the three, decided against it. Now Anthony DeLeo. And Malcolm Hill is fouled, and Malcolm Hill will head to the line and shoot three. That is a careless foul. And a chance for Bond to really extend their lead again here to five. Foul goes on Scrub. Just see there the contact with uh, Hill's right arm.
Hill, a, a very good free throw shooter as well. Up in the high 80 percentile. Makes all three. So Bon again lead by five. Pretty good game so far for Malcolm Hill. 100% from three. He's 67% uh, from the field and also 100% from the foul line as well. Fitty Paldo, great pass, Serini throws it back outside, the three is on the way and it's good. And that is what Sadiga Savalino needed and Thomas Scrub makes up for his foul to send Malcolm Hill to the free throw line for three. Just a couple of moments ago as he knocks down his first from the outside and brings the game back to two. Zubcic left open for three, you can't allow Zubcic that amount of time and space because Thomas Love Zubcic knocks down that three-pointer as well as anyone on this Bond side. That's his third today. I think he could quite believe the amount of space he found himself in. He was looking to pass initially and then realized that he didn't have a defender anywhere near him. As Konstantin Klein checks in for Bonn. We've got just under four minutes to go in this third quarter. And so far, it's a third quarter that certainly hasn't gone to plan for Avellino. And with that three does change things a little bit. So back-to-back -back threes for... Sediga Savalino and it's Andrea Zarini. Savalino have done though here, even though they have struggled early on in this third quarter, is that they've stayed in touch and they still only trail by two. Fittipaldo tried to bounce it into Zarini, hit the foot though of Zubcic. Paldo for three, no good. Zubcic grabs the rebound. Zadiga Savalino have lost four of their last five away Basketball Champions League games after winning seven of their first nine. So certainly not quite as prolific on the road at the moment as they once were as Zubcic drives, can't get it to go with his left hand, is fouled. And uh, will shoot two from the line. one from two so it stays a one possession game here Bon with a three-point lead Zubcic three from five from beyond the arc so far today another open three for Scrub who knocks down another so Thomas Scrub is beginning to come to the party here for Sadiga Savalino levels this game up at 51 points each Scrub with a couple of threes in this third quarter alone. He's got eight points personal now. They look to respond with a three of their own. Come up way short. It's that man Scrub again who grabs the rebound. Here is Philoy. John Cox down to three, so Lunin just shoots it from miles out and knocks it down. And all of a sudden, Sadiga Savalino have found their shot from the outside, and they now lead by three again. It was a slow and pretty turgid start to this third quarter, but Avellino have just hung in there. And thanks to Thomas Scrub and now Martin Lunin. 
They lead by three, although it will be a trip to the foul line here for Martin Brunig, who is fouled. Well, Luna knew that the shot clock was counting down. He just had to throw it off. He was a good metre or so beyond the arc there. Julian Gasinski has checked in for Bonn. Avellino in the penalty now for the final 90 seconds or so. Makes both, and once again, it is just a one-point game. This has been so close, this game, all the way throughout. Biggest lead for Bonn has been six. The biggest lead for Avellino has been three. That is it. His Lunen trying to drive to the baseline was fouled though by Julian Gasinski. Fittipaldi now, Filoy again from way outside with the shot clock counting down. Offensive rebound, great hustle by Andrea Zarini. So another opportunity here for Avellino. Here's Ariel Filoy, shot clock counting down to two. Filoy just throws it up, does he get the roll? No, he doesn't. And the rebound is eventually grabbed by Martin Brunig. Now Konstantin Klein. Klein, nice bounce pass, oh, drives and makes a massive one-handed dunk. Martin Brunig, get out of my way, he says. And scrub. On again, lead by one. Pitti Paldi can't get it to go. Now Ron Curry. Foul goes on. Ariel Filoy. So it'll be another trip to the line here for Bonn with Zadiga Savalino in the penalty. Still a 14-point lead for Chesnimbuk in the other game between uh, them and Stelmet Zielona Gora. 54 points to 40 there, so they're still certainly playing their part for Sadiga Sabalino and Chesnimbuk, but Telecom Buskets Bonn are not going away. They lead by three again. Into the final five seconds or so of this third quarter. Fittipaldo for three. He is good, right on the buzzer. And how important could that be at the end of this game? Fiddy Paldo has shot the three pretty well today. And that is of huge importance for the Sadiga Savalino. It gets them right back on level terms at the end of the third quarter. 57 points each. It could not be closer to bring an end to the regular season of the Basketball Champions League. So Fiddy Paldo up to 11 now. Both sides' stats have decreased slightly from two-point range in that third quarter after that sluggish start. Both of them now above 30%, though, from the outside. The free throw shot is good as well. And here are the highlights from that third quarter.
So final quarter underway, 57 points each. Sadiga Sabalino have to win here to stand any chance of progressing through to the playoff stage. And with things going their way in the other game between Nimbuk and Zielo Nagora, and Scrub lines up another three, can't get this one. Well, you would think if Avellino did win this, then they would be through to the playoffs instead of having to go through to the last 16 of the FIBA Europe Cup, which, of course, the teams that finish in fifth and sixth will head into. Oh, great pass and scrub with an easy two. Great little pass into him, though, by Lunen. Scrub really has just grown into this game in the last, well, the back end of that third quarter. He's now up to double digits. He's got 10. And an offensive foul now called on uh, Ron Curry, so Avellino will get it straight back. Remember, they've now led by more than three in this game, so it's a chance to uh, surpass that right now. Just a reminder, the draw for the playoffs will take place next Wednesday. Wednesday, the 14th of February is the draw, and then the first leg of the uh, playoff will begin on the 6th of March, the 6th and 7th of March, with the second legs taking place the week after. Scrub with a little left-hand jump hook. Surely that was on its way down. Well, Sadiga Savalino wanted a goal ten called, not given. Well, I've got to say, I thought it was... A pretty obvious one, but either way, they've stolen it back again here, Avellino. Now Jason Rich. Back outside to Lunen. Now Fittipaldo will just slow it down. Fittipaldo drives. Oh, rejected! A huge block by Ron Curry. Now Malcolm Hill. Hill tried to throw it into Brunig, great hands from Brunig, it was thrown pretty hard at him and it's the three knocked down by Konstantin Klein and Bonn lead again. One point lead, Klein has eight, he's two from three from the outside, his Lunen tried to throw it into uh, Zarini, knocked out of bounds by Brunig, so uh, Sadiga Savalino will get it back. Back comes Hamadi and Dai. As uh, the most blocks in the Basketball Champions League regular season this season, does Hamadi and Dai. He's got 24. It's Fittipaldo throws it outside, completely open. Three! And Avellino lead again, Andrea Zarini. Defence nowhere to be seen, and Zarini made them pay. He's perfect from the outside as well, looking to respond with a three of their own. Offensive rebound, though, by Gasinski, and he's called on a travel. It'll be another turnover here for Bonn. So a couple of sloppy turnovers for the German side in this. Final quarter. Sadiga so Savalino didn't hurt them the last time. They have the opportunity here to make it a two possession game for the very first time in Sadiga Savalino's favour. His scrub, scrub. Difficult shot gets it to go. And finally, Avellino do make it a two possession game. They lead by four now. So the Italian side just beginning to fire up. 64 points to 60. As Hill tries to respond with a three way off target. Serini with the rebound. Lost his shoe in the process of shooting as well, did Hill. So they're a defender light at the moment. And they try and punish them with a three. No good. Ron Curry with the rebound. Curry. Throws it back outside to Konstantin Klein. Curry again. Muller. Sets the screen. Great defense by Hamadi and Dai. Won't go down as a block, but he did enough to put him off while shooting. Fitty Paldo, great pass. Fitty Paldo fouled and one. 
That's a huge play from Andrea Zarini. He knocked down a three a couple of moments ago, and now he's got an and one to extend the lead to seven. And at the moment, it looks as though Sedigas Avellino have one foot inside the playoffs. Well, the disgruntled look on the face of Pedra Krunic. Not sure what the referees are discussing here. So Zarini for the opportunity to make it a three-point play and make it a seven-point lead, which he can't do. So it stays at six. We still have plenty of time to go, though, in the way that this game has ebbed and flowed. You wouldn't be surprised at all if Telecom Buskets Bond forged another little comeback here. Another miss, though, for the German side, and Fitty Paldo can bring it clear for Sedigas Avellino. Rich throws up the mid-range, too, and all of a sudden, Avellino cannot miss. And the lead has raced out to eight as a timeout is called. And uh, things are beginning to look very rosy indeed for Sinegas Avellino. They lead by eight, Nimburg lead by 13. It is a Telecom Baskets Bond timeout. So a passionate timeout from Stefano Sacripanti. He knows that his side are now very much in the ascendancy here. What do Telecom Baskets Bond have left in the tank? Of course, they're not really playing for much. They know they can't finish higher than seven, so there's no real motivation in terms of where they can finish in the group, but just playing for pride as a massive uh, dunk is thrown down. Is it going to count? Yeah, it is going to count, so this will be an ad one. Thought initially that they'd uh, not allowed the bucket, thought the foul had come before, but no, Brunig was fouled on his way up, so that's a big time play from Brunig. Can't convert on the three point play. He's got the lead back to six. It's Fitty Paldo. Rich, the step back fadeaway two, no good. Brunig grabs the rebound, so another miss for Avellino. Another opportunity here for Bond to eat into this six point lead. Zubcic. Zubcic nearly had it stolen. Foul goes on. Andrea Zarini, though. We've got five minutes to go in this final quarter. De Leo comes back in for Bond. So Zarini called on his third foul. 
is Konstantin Klein, who drives, can't make the two, but will head to the line and shoot two. So Avellino have just uh, one more foul to give out there. Both. And the lead is back to four. Here's Zarini. Foul goes on Zubcic. So Bon also just with one more foul to give in the final four minutes and 49 seconds. It's Fidi Paldo. Right to Rich. Rich just catches, shoots. Can't make the three. Rebound by Brunig. So all of a sudden, Avellino just got a little cold out here. Klein out to Zubcic on its way for another three. You know the rest. He is lethal from the outside, Tomislav Zubcic. And just when it looked as though Sadigas Avellino were in control, just a minute or so later, he's back to a one point game and a timeout called. Stefano Sacripanti clearly not happy with something, just giving the referee a piece of his mind here. Oh, this is what it's all about. Just four and a half minutes to go in the regular season. We are still none the wiser as to who will be in the playoffs. There's Fitti Paldo for Avellino. Zarini comes, sets the screen, leaves an open three. Pitti Paldo can't get it to go. Last touch though was off Bond, so Avellino will get it back with another 14 seconds. Pedro Krunic still living every single minute out there on the on the side. Even though Bond can't finish any higher than seventh, but he still certainly wants Bond to finish on a high note. Rich nearly left the ball behind him and again Rich throws it away in the end not a great possession from Jason Rich oh can you believe it and called on a backcourt violation oh that is as sloppy as it can get from Telecom Baskets Bon and Pedro Krunic wants them to have a look on the uh, he wants this reviewed because to be fair to him I thought it was just about okay but the referee's clearly in no doubt. They're not even going to have a look at it. So they will turn it over. Avellino in possession again. Here's Jason Rich to the baseline. Steps back, throws up the two. No good. Zubcic with the rebound. Now Josh Mayo. Nice bounce pass. To Bartolo. Bartolo is called on a travel. It'll be another turnover for Bon. Sigigas Avellino at the moment not really punishing these German turnovers. The lead is still just one. Oh, 
Phantom Luna now. Ariel Filoy back to Lunan. Oh, Lunan gets lucky that it deflected and found its way to Rich, who's off target with the three. Bruni grabs the rebound. So another miss for Sadiga Savalino. They're going cold at the wrong time here, the Italian side. Throws up the little floater, gets it to go. Bond lead again. And that eight point lead for Avellino has vanished in a matter of about 90 seconds or so. They led 68 points to 60, they now trail 69 points to 68. So that run they went on has been cancelled out as Philoy throws the three, another one that comes up short. I almost feel as though they're trying to force it a little bit out there, Sadiga Savalino at the moment. Great bounce pass, or oh, Bruni couldn't bring the ball in. Yeah, it's one thing they don't want to do here, the Italians. Start trying to force matters out there and just shoot the three every time they get it. They've still got to be patient, wait for the, the best look. As uh, Zubcic is called on the foul, so Bond with no more fouls to give with two minutes and 17 seconds to go. That's Zubcic's third. Great pass and die! Oh, he's gone for the spectacular one-handed dunk. Well, how costly could that be? Well, and die surely just has to make sure of that. He's gone for the big left-handed dunk. Got it all wrong. And now Bond, can they punish him down the other end? Well, in these crucial moments with under two minutes to go in the regular season, you have to win the game to stand any chance of qualifying. And he goes for a spectacular dunk instead of just making sure of the two. Hamadi and Dai, not his finest moment. Now Zubcic, it'll be a two. If it goes, it does. And Bond lead by four. So foul called. So the lead is three, 71 points to 68. Just under 90 seconds to go. Foot was just inside the line, Tomislav Zubcic, but boy does he shoot that long shot well. Four from six from the outside today. So a trip to the line here for Jason Rich. Every single one of these becomes absolutely imperative. Makes the first, Avellino doing well here just to keep it to a one possession game. Although they will not be pleased the way that they've played since going out to that eight point lead earlier on in this final quarter, they've really gone cold and almost looks as though they've got a little complacent. The lead is back to one. Nimburg are well in control against Zielona Gora, 69 points to 54 in that one. So it does look as though Avellino just need to win to guarantee themselves a spot in the playoffs starting in around four weeks' time. Shot clock here down to three. Zubcic throws it over his head. What a play, Tomislav Zubcic. Uses the glass, gets it to go. Three-point lead, just under 60 seconds to go. It's going to be a dramatic ending here in Germany. Lunen throws it back outside to Ariel Filoy. Filoy, nice little step. Has to throw it up, comes up way short. Does well to grab the offensive rebound. And uh, Thomas Scrub puts in the two. The hearts will be racing, the palms will be sweating out there. Who can hold their nerve in the final 30 seconds? How they could do with a miss here, Sidiga Savalino. Here's Anthony DeLeo. DeLeo penetrates and drives, puts in the two. I'm not sure the two's going to count, though. I think the whistle came just before he got into his shooting stride. So a timeout is called. The bucket won't count, so it is still just a one-point lead for Bonn. And we've got about 20 seconds remaining. Timeout by the Germans.
German fans still on their feet. They would love to see their side finish with a win. And the foul. So a trip to the line. That is... Uh, they didn't have another foul to give here to Ligas Avellino. So Bonn with the opportunity to make it a three-point game once again. It will be uh, Martin Brunig from the line. Clutch free throws from Martin Brunig. So 75 points to 72. 17.4 seconds to go. And another timeout is called here. Interesting listening to Pedro Krunic there. He said if 55's in the game, make the foul if he gets it. That's because Hamadi and Dai is a 33% free throw shooter in the Basketball Champions League regular season, so they don't mind sending him to the line. And he is indeed on the floor. Three points down the alley oop boy. Oh, and Dai just couldn't quite catch the ball. And he tries to draw the foul, which he does. Was he inside or outside there? Thomas Scrub. Well, it was almost a wonderful little inbound pass. Let's have another look here. Scrub. No, I think he was inside, so he'll only shoot two here. Will Scrub. So uh, a chance to bring it back to just a one point game. Scrub normally pretty reliable from the line, shooting at 80% in the regular season. I think they may just be having a look to see whether he was inside or outside here, or was it? Did his foot just go out of bounds? I'm not sure whether that's what they might be looking for. No, it is going to be two shots from the line for Thomas Scrub. Tell you what, his foot must have been very close to being out of bounds there. I don't even know whether they looked at that. So Scrub makes the first. And makes the second as well, so they'll... Try and get a steal here. Now they intentionally foul. So 
they send uh, Bartolo to the line. We're going to get quite a bit of this over the next uh, 11 seconds or so, I'd imagine. Nimburg could stretch their lead to 20 against Ilo Nagora, so that is done pretty much. They've got four minutes to go. But at the moment, Zielo Nagora will still be going through in fourth position. With Bond leading here by two. Makes both again, three point leads. And another timeout. So everyone on their phones, everyone looking to see what's going on. <laughs> the other animated Pedro Krunic still jumping up and down like a jack in the box on the side. And Avelino trail by three. And they have 10 seconds, they shoot the three, comes up way short, and Mayo grabs the rebound. And he, uh, does he escape the foul? No, he doesn't. They did manage to foul him. Lunin just about was able to. But this is a big chance now for Bond. This would make it a two-possession game with 5.4 seconds on the clock. They only need one of these free throws as well from Josh Mayo. Things are not looking good here for Sadigas Avellino. And he makes one, so it is a two-possession game. 5.4 seconds on the clock. And he makes both. Well, he throws it up, needs it to go, it doesn't. And surely that will be that. 2.1 seconds to go, that is that. And Sadiga Savalino will not be going through to the Basketball Champions League playoffs. They had to win here tonight against already knocked out Telecom Baskets Bond. But all credit to the German side. They certainly weren't going down with a whimper. They were fighting right to the end and they get the job done. 79 points to 74. And even though Stelmet Zielonagora trailed by 19 against Ches Nimburg, it will be Zielonagora who finish in that fourth spot and will head through to the Basketball Champions League playoffs in four weeks' time or so. And as for Sadiga Savalino, they will finish in fifth spot. So a place in the last 16 of the FIBA Europe Cup awaits for them. So not quite the plan for Sadiga Savalino. They applaud their fans that have come over to Germany to watch them, as do the Telecom Baskets Bond supporters. It's not quite been their regular season, but at least they finish with a win. They give their fans something to cheer about but at least now they can focus completely on their domestic campaign in the Basketball Bundesliga. But Avellino will certainly look back on that fourth quarter as a massive opportunity miss. They led by eight, remember, at one stage. They went 68 points to 60 up, and from that point onwards, they just stopped playing. They couldn't make a shot, and Bonn were able to forge the comeback and win by five in the end. Here are the stats just ticking on through. Bonn with 14 turnovers as well. But Zukcic was magnificent, 17 points. He shot six from nine from the field. Brunig had 10 rebounds to go with his 17 points. He collected a double-double. Scrub, well, he did well for Sadigas Avellino. He finished with 16.7 rebounds. 
and Dai led the way with eight rebounds and Filoy had six assists. But Avellino, I'm sure they will leave here with a bit of a heavy heart. They will be disappointed with the way they finished this fourth quarter. And I don't know whether uh, Stelmetzil and Agora will know they've still got about 60 seconds or so to go against Ches Nimburg, but uh, I'm sure they'll be fearing the worst, the fact that they trail by, by almost 20 in that one. But uh, they can rest easy. They will be playing in the playoffs of the Basketball Champions League in four weeks' time or so. Remember, the draw for the playoffs will be taking place next Wednesday, Wednesday the 14th of February, to determine the draw. The top two teams in each group will be seeded and they will also play their second leg of the playoffs at home, so they'll have home court advantage for the second leg. And uh, just some other things to tell you about that draw. You cannot draw the same team that you were in a regular season group with. So, for example, Besiktas here in Group D couldn't draw Ches Nimbert in the playoffs, but you can draw a team of the same country, so a Turkish team could play another Turkish team in the playoffs as well. So that starts on March the 6th and March the 7th for the first leg and the second leg the week after on the 13th and the 14th in the playoffs. Once again, the draw will be uh, next Wednesday on the 14th of February. But, well, that concludes the Group D regular season. It's come right down to the wire again, hasn't it? But uh, don't forget that you can, of course, continue to watch the regular season because Group A hasn't finished yet. That'll be tipping off in around 10 minutes' time or so. So make sure you go over and watch uh, one of the Group A games that will be starting. I'm sure plenty more drama to come over the next few hours. But thanks for your company over the last uh, few months for the regular season. And we've only got uh, about a month or so to wait until the playoffs get underway. Don't forget as well to download the Basketball Champions League app where you can get all the latest news and highlights and who draws who and who's made it through to the playoffs. Uh, you can get all that on the app. So download that. But for now, unfortunately for Sadigas Avellino and Telecom Baskets Bon, their Basketball Champions League campaign is over. But there's still plenty more action in the Champions League regular season tipping off in about 20 minutes' time.